And welcome back to another edition of To Your Health. And we are back with Dr. Ann Schmidt with Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, friend of the show. Dr. Ann, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. All right. As we now know, um, even though we have a lot of information about uh, social distancing, we have information about if you have symptoms, if you're coughing, be careful who you are around, wear your mask, certainly if you're going to be in a, a, a tight crowd. Uh, we've heard all of this stuff, but as is becoming more and more apparent, uh, it seems like this might be something all of us have a chance of getting, whether you're you know, even if you get the vaccine, we know that it makes the symptoms a lot more manageable. The chances of being severely um, sick or hospitalized or even dying from COVID is much less if you're vaccinated. However, my question is, we don't hear a lot about what to do if you do get COVID. Do grandma's old uh, remedies of, you know, some honey, and maybe if your grandpa will tell you honey and a little bit of whiskey, you get your plenty of fluids, get your rest. What do we treat it like a cold? How do we, how do we, what do we do if we get the positive test? What's next? That's a really great question. And I think you made another really good point early that I just want to emphasize before we get into kind of what to do with your tests. And that is the vaccine and the boosters are very effective at preventing severe COVID, those severe symptoms and hospitalizations and deaths. So I think that's critical. The vaccines work really well for that. And, and as we know, there's been a booster, a second booster that's been um, recommended now for anyone over the age of 50, as well as some people who have certain immunocompromised um, conditions. So just want to point that out, but to mm -hmm. your point, absolutely. Vaccines are not perfect. Um, it doesn't mean that you have a 0% chance of catching COVID. And so what do you do if you maybe have a few symptoms? You go to the CVS, the Walgreens, or to the U.S. Postal Service free COVID tests at home, which I would encourage everybody to do if you have not gotten your uh, four free COVID tests per address to have those available. Take that test and it comes back positive. So really important question, now what do I do? Well, CDC still recommends with a positive test, um, if you've been vaccinated, to go ahead and isolate um, if you have symptoms. So you still wanna do that. You still wanna monitor your symptoms to make sure that you're not getting short of breath. If you have a, a pulse oximeter at home, the little, the little uh, contraption you put on your finger that checks your blood oxygen levels, it's always good to check that um, with the positive COVID test. Sometimes those symptoms can sneak up on you. If you see your oxygen levels dropping um, below 90%, certainly that's some, a concerning symptom. But again, if you've been vaccinated and boosted and your symptoms are mild, you're absolutely right. I can't vouch for the whiskey, but I can say that we want to drink plenty of fluids. We want to make sure we don't get dehydrated. Sometimes we might not feel as thirsty or hungry. So make sure you're drinking fluids. If you can't drink a lot, make sure that it's something like some Gatorade or some Powerade that's got a few uh, minerals and uh, vitamins in there. Also, if you can eat, eat. Uh, grandma's uh, chicken soup remedy is definitely a good one. It goes down easily. It's, it's healthy. It's warm. Um, and rest. So you don't want to try to push yourself. We know with COVID sometimes it, a lot of people have mild symptoms like a cold, but we've noticed that sometimes those symptoms can linger a little longer than, than we might expect. So don't be surprised if your symptoms kind of go on for longer than a few days or maybe even longer than a week. Um, as long as you're not short of breath, as long as you're able to still mo uh, mobilize, so you're still able to stand and walk, or you're kind of at your baseline level of, of ability to, to kind of move around, you don't necessarily need to see your physician for that. If you have symptoms that concern you, absolutely let your physician know. But to your point, we want to make sure you stay hydrated. We want to make sure you can eat. If you can't do those things, definitely let your uh, primary care physician, your primary care provider know that because we do have treatments available now. So again, to your point, we've got some treatments before we only had monoclonal antibodies. Those were, those are an IV infusion. Now we have some oral medications that are available. So again, call your physician if you have a positive test um, and you have other risk factors because there are some treatment options that might be available as well. You had just mentioned if you're having difficulty eating, um, are those kind of the, the real triggers to let you know, 
I, I need to call my doctor. Are there, because you, you had mentioned if you're short of breath, but I've had friends who've had it and they were fine one day and the next day they climbed up the stairs and they thought, well, what was that all about? Took a test. Sure enough, that was COVID, but they were okay. I mean, they, they, they had the taste it thing. They lost their, they lost their taste buds a little bit. Um, how short of breath, like what is that threshold that you think, mm, I really need to, I need to talk to somebody to maybe more than just the chicken soup, get some of the prescription uh, remedies. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And again, I'll say for the, the prescription remedies, you know, the earlier you contact your physician, the better after, okay. you know, after, after a test, because the earlier those are given, it's kind of like the flu medications. You need to, to kind of get that in early, Right. but, but for shortness of breath, it's really important to keep an eye on that because like you said, sometimes people are fine one day or one morning and then by the afternoon, they're, they're really severely short of breath. We haven't seen that as much with the newer variants. Um, the, the first COVID wave we had had certainly affected people's respiratory system really severely. But again, it's not something you wanna ignore. Please don't ignore any COVID symptoms. All right, Dr. Ann, thank you so much. Also, don't forget if you uh, have any medical questions at all, you can go to Blue Cross's website. They have a lot of resources that are available right there. Um, even for non-members of Blue Cross, you may find some great information. But I tell you, I hope a lot of people have their minds put at ease uh, because we have learned a lot about COVID over the past couple of years and we're getting better and better and better at treating it. And people are getting away from it. Even when they get it, they're getting away from it a lot better off than we were in the past. And that is all terrific news going forward. Dr. Ann, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.